Andrew from Eurisco Studios. Um, I came across a problem, when I think it was when I was trying to do a tank tread. Well, I was thinking about doing a tank tread, and also the same sort of same sort of thing is a, a a chain that I've got here, sort of an old bike chain or something like that. And it was always difficult to get um, the the chain links and the cog teeth to all match up exactly perfectly. Um, so I thought I'd write a plugin that would help solve that problem. And you can see here as well we've got two different types of chain links. We've got an inner and an outer type. And you can see when this, uh, as this goes around, all of the cog teeth and the links all uh, match up perfectly. And it's it's quite difficult to do, especially to get it to go um, perfectly as well. So no matter how many times you rotate it, you always want it to line up perfectly every single time. And that's what I'll be uh, telling you how to do with the use of a free plugin that I made. So, everyone, before we end up uh, in layout, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff in Modeler first that's required to set this up. So, first of all, I've got the uh, I've got a cam wheel object here, and uh, also I have you see the cam wheel. If I just change the view. You can see regular amount of cogs on it spokes, whatever you want to call them. There's actually 44 there. That'll come in. Ha uh, that'll be relevant a bit later. Um, in addition to that, I've also got a poly chain here. Now this chain is uh, used as a path for all the links, things like that. Um, so quite straightforward. Actually uses the points, not necessarily the the edges or the polygons between them, but it's just easier to see and you can also show it up in layout if it's actually a poly chain which is quite handy and last but not least I've got chain links both an inner one and an outer one and you don't have to have two different kinds but I've got two different kinds because it's it was based on a this particular model was based on a realistic chain um, and it also helps demonstrate some of the uh, the abilities of the plugin so let's head on over to. Okay, here we are in layout. I've got my test scene set up. I've got a the the flywheel with the cog here, the cam wheel. I've got my my path that the uh, chain links are going to follow, and I've got my two individual chain links, two different types of chain links. So first of all, I'm just going to start with one of them. Let's grab this one my motion options open already. Go to add modifier, chain move, double click to open up the options. Now the cog teeth have s it's uh, set to 44. Um, just happens to be the default because this is my default test object which has got 44 teeth on it. So for the curve item, this is the path, the curve that we want our link to follow chain you can see that it's already snapped to it and the driver item this is the item well it's literally the item that drives the the chain link around its path which is the flywheel cam wheel the wheel and we can choose the uh, the channel I think it's the yeah, it's the bank channel. Let's select bank. There we go. Can just move this down here for now. Just gonna have a quick look at here. You can see this is off to the side. It should be like that. Let's just sort this out. Ninety degrees, that's right. And I've already set up the cam wheel so that it's already turning, so you can see it's already driving its motion. There we go. See, it's not quite right at the moment. There can be various reasons for that. Uh, to sort that out, I'm going to switch to the side view. 
so we can get a better look at what's actually going on. Let's switch to front face wire. In fact, we'll just go for a wireframe for now. So we can see see what's going on and where our chain link is actually sitting. Now there's a few little functions here that come with the plugin. Let's just Now we need the the uh, the chain link's distance from the driver so that it can work out all the maths for us. So once I've got my chain link into a sensible position where it's sort of at the radius of where it sort of sits at the radius of the uh, of the driver, the cam wheel here, I can click get driver radius and it will work out the distance from the pivot point of the driver item to our chain link item. So now that we've got the distance from the the uh, now we've got the radius, uh, things should uh, run a little bit smoother. You can see it's not uh, that the timing's uh, working out a lot better here, but you can still see that the position of the link isn't quite right. So what we need to do is go in here and change the uh, start displacement. Let's just move it forward or back until it sits in there nicely. Now hopefully that should go all the way around more or less. Before I go any further, I should probably tell you about this this option here, the clone offset. Now, when you clone this item with the chain move plugin applied, it'll offset. Obviously, you want to form a chain. You don't want them all to sort of sit on top of one another. And this will uh, offset each clone by our link spacing here. The link spacing is worked out from the length of the polychain, the path that the link follows, and the number of cogs, or cog teeth. Um, and then it yeah, works out these, these two values, how many chain links we should have, and what the spacing between those links actually is. So now, in theory, I should be able to come in here, we've got the offset of one, and I should be able to clone this item times. There we go. OpenGL is not going to be terribly fast here, but hey, what can you do? There we go. Things are following quite nicely. But yeah, I don't want to do that just yet, so I'm actually going to get rid of all of those now. Okay, the reason I did that is that um, we've got two different types of chain links here. What happens if we have this chain link and this chain link? So if I copy this and paste it in, I do just have to change its default heading here. There we go, now it's sitting right on top of the first chain link. But I don't want that. I need to offset it by one chain link really. So point I want to make its offset point O one one eight three one. Now that 
I've done that, now I've got two chain links. Uh, I obviously don't want the clone offset to be one, because otherwise if I clone this one, it'll end up in the position of this one. So I need to change the clone offset to two. see now all of these cog teeth and chain links all slotting in exactly where they should all the chain links link up perfectly and you should be able to use this for all kind of things chains uh, tank treads because I know that's always been a big problem with lightwave in fact it's one of the reasons I first started to make this plugin and uh, note about the um, the link spacing here because I tried to use it earlier and it didn't quite work uh, I forgot the uh, the clone offset was set to one so it was already messing with the, uh, the the displacement of the of the the chain link you can see here but if I then set that to zero so that one's got a start displacement equal to the link spacing and that one's got a start displacement of zero and you can see that they match up perfectly so Everything works fine.